two minutes prior to doing anything, right? And what do you think the first thing is that I'm going to do? I'm going to clean out the back of his airway so I can see, right? So suction out the patient. Because I have to be able to visualize the glottis. Brittany, when I take the mask off, can you pull the OPA out? Yep. Right. Donald, you're going to feel that piece of plastic come out of your mouth, and I'm going to put another piece of plastic in to clean out the back of your throat for me. Okay? Next breath. <laughs> Everything's out, going as far as I can see. Okay, Donald, we're going to start resuming the breathing for you again. So I do this one to two minutes until the SATs came up. The patient looks pink again. And the next thing I want to do, if you had an active pharyngeal reflex or a gag reflex, is what? Uh, and there's two ways you can deliver this, but only do it if it's required, if the patient's completely unconscious and unresponsive, they won't have a pharyngeal reflex, you don't have to worry about doing this stuff. Okay, Donald, that plastic's going to go in and we're going to numb the back of your mouth and throat, okay? Just like the dentist does. Okay, can take your Okay, Donald, you're going to feel it going in. One, two, three, four, five, six sprays, maximum of ten. After we do that, of course, Donald, can breathe for you again now. What's his vital signs? Uh, no, uh, so he's still tachycardic, but we got good ventilation going on. Yeah. Okay. No dangerous arrhythmias. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been one to two minutes. Now the other way of going in is to use laryngoscopes. So you can visualize the laryngeal structures internally. Okay, so. Mask off. Donald, the last thing's coming out. I'm going to give you some of this spray. So I'm going slowly and gently. Now I can go and psh, 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 psh. So we won't need this anymore. I'm going to resume ventilation again. One to two minutes goes by. Now remember, you only do it if you need to put that local anesthetic. You only do it then. But only do it one way or the other, you don't have to do both. Okay, so Brittany, we're going to do, we'll put the tube in now. So what I'd like you to do is switch over from bag valve mass to bag valve tube ventilation. Okay. When the tube's in, I'll secure it and try to take the uh, stylet out. Okay. If you can attach the syringe to the pilot balloon line. Okay, so you'll take up the stylet and I'll take yeah. the syringe. Yeah, okay. if I'm late with that, then just take the stylet out yourself and okay. make sure that the tube's secured. Okay. okay. All right. So one to two minutes have gone by. Sats are good. Vital signs are good, TJ? Yep. All right. Okay, we're going to be putting that breathing tube now into the back of your throat for you, Donald. Next breath. Okay, I got the OPA. The tube. Okay, can you hold the head of the bed? The head of the patient? Yep. And you. Okay, it's in. You hold the tube, I'm pulling out the stylet. Got it, I got the syringe. Okay, you're going to attach him to the bag, right? Let me see chest rise. Looks okay. like we're getting some end tidal back, looks about 60. Condensation in the airway, I take my stethoscope, listening over his lungs. Got good air entry, equal bilaterally, you can see it's expanding nicely. Listen over the stomach, nothing coming over the stomach. So the tube is 22 at the patient's lips, 21 at the patient's teeth. That's my lab marking. And I'm not sure if you caught it, but when I put the tube in, I also looked to see where the tube was sitting after I pulled the ring of scope open, right? So it should stay at that spot. Right, we're going to commence to tape the tube in place. So I'll need, to, you got the tapes there? Yeah, they're underneath them. Okay, you hold on to the tube for me? I've got the tube. Now, when you guys are taping this tube in this lab period, part of next lab period, tape without gloves on because it's a lot easier to do the taping. All right? Now, this isn't an evac tube, so you don't have to worry about the evac catheter, but you've got the pilot balloon line here as well. The assistant has to be fairly talented because the tube cannot be left unsecure without tape being on it. And the assistant also has to ventilate the patient. So, in order for me to do this tape job, Properly, there has to be coordination and communication between the person doing the intubation and the tape job and the person that's assisting, right? 
Now when you're going to take the tube in place, take the tube and place it to one side of the mouth or the other side of the mouth. And whatever side it's on, that's the side that you start, start the tape job from. Now when you start taping, you're going to split that tape in two parts, lengthwise. So that's why you made the cut through the top so you could tear the tape. So you're going to have two halves. You're going to have the top half and the bottom half. And the order for the tapes is bottom top, starting from the side the tube's on, bottom top. Top tape goes around the, uh, the endotracheal tube. Then you go to the other side, split the tapes, you're going to have two halves again, top and a bottom one. You start with the top one, it goes on the tube, and then you bring the bottom one up to screw everything in place. Right? So bottom, top, top, bottom, top, tube. Okay? So this is what it's going to look like. Green, you still got that too? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to tear the tapes on this side of you. Take that off there. And this is where we find out if the tape set that you made are, are adequate. So Can I'm going to get you to hold this side here. Now you also need to kind of center, center where the double-sided part is. Got it home? Yep. Okay, Donald, this ripping is not your skin, it's the tape that I'm using. So you have to be careful with this, how you do it. Okay, I've got the tape now. Okay. Just move the bag up a bit. Right on. Okay. So we're going to bring this top tape, sorry, the bottom tape, because it's bottom top. The bottom one's going to come under the patient's earlobe, and it's going to go between the nose and the upper lip. It's going to go right across his face and go down on the other side. That's the first tape. The second tape now is going to come up, and this is the top tape. It's going to come up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tube from Brittany. So Brittany, I've got the tube. Okay. I'm going to bring it over to the corner of the patient's mouth, and now I'm going to secure the tape to the tube. I'm going to wrap the tape around the tube a few times well, without letting go of the endotracheal tube. I'm going to just take that cuff. That pad blue one now. So we've got a lot of tape here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply tear that, get rid of this, and make a new tab. Something like that. Okay, Brittany, you take the tube. Got the tube. She's got the tube. I'm going to now do the same thing from the opposite side. So which tape do I use first? Top one. So bottom, top, top, which this one is. Bottom. So this one's going to go all around. And now I'm going to secure the tube from the top, going the opposite direction around the tube. Once I've got that done, I'm going to grab the last piece of tape, which is the bottom one. This is going to come right across. Like so. And it's going to tie everything in place. Like that. Now once that tube has been taped, all four pieces are on the patient and on the tube, you can let go and take a look at your marking. And I still am 21 at the teeth, 22 at the patient's lips. So the tube hasn't moved. Grab your stethoscope, listen for good air entry, check your vital signs, and what would I do now? Call for a chest x-ray. So the chest x-ray is on its way here. The person's going to bring the chest x-ray up to the unit and we'll have the chest x-ray done here. Now what I need to do is my cuff pressure chest check. Once cuff, or cuff pressure check has been done, then you can get ready to either suction the patient or if the endotracheal tube needs suctioning, or you can suction out the pharynx if the pharynx needs suctioning out, or you can start getting ready to set the patient up on a ventilator, put them on life support because you're not going to stand here and bag until the x-ray is done. We'll get some ventilation established in that way. So if the patient needed to be suctioned pharyngeal, I could just simply go now and suction them out again, placing that yonker to the back of their oral pharynx, getting all the secretions out of there, or potentially putting a suction catheter <coughs> down as well. There's something else I was going to say. Am I in suction? Yeah, if the yeah, that wasn't it, yeah, but I should be saying that. So 
So for the PH needs to suction the patient's endotracheal tube out, because who knows, maybe there's a bunch of secretions coming up their airway right now. All I'd simply have to do is transition from oropharyngeal and hook my closed suction catheter up to my suction tubing, readjust my suction pressure down to one that's appropriate for oropharyngeal suctioning, and then go and put the suction catheter down the endotracheal tube and suction on the patient. And I just remember what it was, and I forgot was again. <laughs> oh yeah, evac tube, this is what it was. Now your evac tube is gonna have a second catheter, right? So can just somebody throw me an evac tube off that uh, cart? Yeah, check it here. Or bring it here. <laughs> so when you're taping the tubes in place, try not to tape the pilot balloon line or the evac tube to the tube itself. So your tape's going to go around the tube, not around the evac portion. Why is that? Yeah, you don't want to block it off. Because if you apply a lot of pressure to the uh, evac catheter part of the tube, you could compress it. And if the tape compresses it, you can attach your suction to the evac catheter all you want, but nothing's going to come off. So don't tape that to the endotracheal tube, and don't tape the pilot balloon line to the endotracheal tube as well for the same reasons. Although this is a little bit more resistant to collapse, it could still potentially get kinked off under the tape, and then you wouldn't be able to use your pilot balloon line for anything. Okay. So evac tubes, make sure you know how to tape them up appropriately. Now one of the things that you might have noticed that is when I went to, or Brittany set this up and I put the suction catheter underneath here, I never ever did take and shut the suction off. Try not to get into the habit of suctioning orally and then shutting the suction catheter off, suction device off. Because if you do that, you're just kind of potentially uh, taking a few extra seconds to get the patient suctioned out and it might, they might require suctioning immediately. So always keep this running. What else, Brittany? I think that's it. Yeah, we've done this uh, two times already before this time. And you can kind of see that the actual intubation took how long? 10 seconds? But it's all the workup, starting with what Jacob and TJ did with me and Brittany substituting in, and then everything that you do after the tube's in. So it requires good communication requires a good understanding of what the procedure is, and it needs anticipation. The people doing the procedure need to anticipate what the next step is. The people doing the procedure also have to recognize that issues can occur during the procedure, and how would you react to it? For example, if I had suctioned the patient out, resumed bag valve mass ventilation for one to two minutes, then went to go and put the topical in if it was required, what if the patient vomits at that point in time? or vomits right after I go and place the um, top in. What should I do? What would you do? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go and suction. What if the patient just had a big meal, food wasn't really digested too well, and I got a few big pieces of well, pea in there, like actual vegetable pea in there, and it couldn't get, well, maybe go like this. It's not the cleanest. But the mouth probably isn't that clean anyway. It's got vomit inside of it. But if you probably get a lot of secretions out like this, then using one of these things. All right? So know what to do. If there's a lot of vomit coming in out. You may not be able to use this adequately. You may have to put the patient in the recovery position and roll them as a group. Roll them on their side. Let the secretions come out and then use this. Because you want that clean before you start ventilating again. Dave? Nothing. So, T.